polarized light. So we have a few goals in this session where we'll introduce polarized light and we'll especially be talking about linearly or plane polarized light. We will talk about what happens when unpolarized light goes through a polarizer and compare that to what happens when linearly polarized light goes through or maybe goes through. And we'll talk very briefly about polarized sunglasses. Okay, so polarized light. In linearly polarized or plane polarized light, the electric field vectors all lie in a single plane. So that's what we're seeing in the animation. Uh, one color is for the electric field vectors, the other color is for the magnetic field vectors. And you can see that those are at 90 degrees to one another, and they're also each 90 degrees to the way the wave itself is propagating. Okay, and the wave the wave itself goes through at um, at the speed of light. Okay, so that animation was really slowing things down because those electric and magnetic fields oscillate uh, back and forth very very quickly. So you know sources like the sun or a uh, an incandescent light bulb emit unpolarized light, but there are lots of ways you can polarize light. For instance, you can do it by reflection. You can do it by selective absorption. You can absorb, you know, uh, electric field vectors one way but not the other way. And you can do it also by scattering, and that's how it's done in the atmosphere, actually. Okay, so we'll focus on polarization by selective absorption, and that's what sort of a piece of Polaroid film is all about. That's known as a dichroic material. And those materials are made from very long chain molecules that are kind of all lined up. And because of the way it's made, uh, these, this material selectively absorbs light with electric field ve vectors pointing in a perpendicular direction, and it just passes through the vectors that are uh, perpendicular to that. Okay, so only light going one way is absorbed and uh, light with E-field vectors going one way is absorbed, and light with E-field vectors going perpendicular direction is not absorbed. So as long as it's thick enough, you can absorb all that material, all those E-field vectors going one particular way, and the light comes out with all the E-field vectors going the other way. It's linearly polarized, in other words. So, uh, as I said, polarized, polarized, uh, polarizing film does this, and the lens of Lenses of polarizing sunglasses are made from the same materials. So our rule here is that if unpolarized comes, unpolarized light comes through, pass through the polarizer, then the light coming out the other side is exactly half the intensity of what was coming in. So that's a good rule of thumb. Unpolarized light going through a polarizer uh, comes out a polarized and b half as intense as what it was coming in. Now, instead, if you have linearly polarized light, then we have something called Malice's Law telling us what the final intensity is. So here we have I1 equals I initial, cos squared delta theta. Delta theta is the angle between the polarization direction of the light and the transmission axis of the polarizer. Okay, so note that if you make those angle, the angle between them zero, you get all the light going through. If you make it 90 degrees, none of the light comes through. In between, you get something in between. Now, this is kind of illustrating uh, Malice's Law in action. So at the bottom, we have some light, some linearly polarized light. Then we have a polarizer, and you can see kind of the transmission axis orientation of that polarizer. And so it only allows one component of the incident light to go through and it blocks, completely blocks the component that's perpendicular to that direction. Now if we add a second polarizer, which is at 90 degrees to the first one, then all the light gets blocked. So the first one blocks one component, the other one blocks the other component. And this is what is known as crossed polarizers. Two polarizers back to back that have their transmission axes at 90 degrees to one another. Okay, so that's one way you can uh, cut down all the light to zero, completely nothing at all. All right, 
So let's do an example. Here we have unpolarized light coming in, passing through a polarizer that's at it with its transmission axis at 50 degrees to the vertical. Then it goes on, hits a 20 degree polarizer. Okay, so we start with unpolarized light. And our rule of thumb is that unpolarized light hitting a polarizer A comes out polarized, and it's polarized in the direction of the transmission axis of that polarizer it just went through, so it comes out at 50 degrees. And its intensity is reduced by a factor of 2. So it's half the intensity. Now, how much gets through the next one? Well, now you have polarized light hitting the second one, so you apply Malice's law. And that's all what we just said, actually. So, oops, let's actually apply analysis law to that. So let's think about it. So uh, what you have is the polarizing, uh, first polarizer polarizes the beam at 50 degrees. Then it hits this 20 degree polarizer. What angle do you use in, polar in Malice's law? You use the difference between those two numbers. So you would actually use 30 degrees as your angle for delta theta in Malice's law. Okay, so let's talk about how light gets polarized. So you can, uh, well, another way to do it, not just using dichroic materials, you can actually do it in the atmosphere. So light comes in from the sun, hits uh, atoms and molecules in the atmosphere, and gets scattered, which means it sort of gets absorbed for a very brief amount of time by the atom or molecule, and then gets re-emitted, often in a different direction. And so the light scattering is unpolarized if the light gets emitted back in the same direction it was going in the first place. A linearly polarized if it happens to scatter in a direction perpendicular to the way it was traveling, and somewhere in between if it scatters at an angle that's somewhere in between. So if you're outside on a nice clear day, blue sky, you put on a pair of polarizing sunglasses and look kind of 90 degrees from the sun. Light coming to you from that part of the sky should be linearly polarized. So if you just tilt your head back and forth, back and forth, you should see the sky lighten, darken, lighten, darken as you tilt your head. Uh, because at some angles, you'll be basically blocking most, in fact, almost all the light. And at other angles, you'll be letting it through because it's linearly polarized. Okay, and that's a good way to test your sunglasses, actually. If you're not sure whether they're polarizing sunglasses or not, you can do this funny test. People look at you funny, but at least you know about your sunglasses. So how do we align the lenses, the transmission axis of the lenses, in polarizing sunglasses? Well, they're not done randomly. In fact, they're done such as to block the light that reflects off horizontal surface, such as maybe the surface of a pond or a lake. And this process of light coming down from the sun, reflecting off that horizontal sur surface, can at least partly polarize. And if the angle is just right, it can be perfectly linearly polarized. And so we then align our transmission axis so they allow light with E-field vectors that are vertical to pass through to your eye, but they block uh, the light with E-field vectors uh, horizontal. And then we'll reduce the glare off that pond or lake or whatever it is that that sunlight is reflecting from. Okay, so that's kind of a good brief overview of polarized light. The end.